You are listening to Chaos Springs Eternal, a Delta Green actual play, brought to you by Quartermasters of the Tabletop. This is Season 1, City of Woe. Delta Green, by its nature, deals with violent themes and disturbing imagery, as well as horrors beyond our comprehension. Now, if you're one of those people who don't mind comprehending some horrors from time to time, I think you'll have a good time listening here. Join us, won't you? Hello and welcome back to Chaos Springs Eternal Season 1, City of Woe. Boy, howdy, well, I really do want to get into this episode, but Noah brought up a, a pretty good subject that I think is going to just, just get us a nice little reminiscing. We've been doing a little reminiscing in some of these these banters, um, you know, about our, about our TTRPG days, but uh, Noah specifically was talking about... Yeah, I, I really wanted to ask a question about what was your social security code and your credit card number. And the okay, funny we cannot keep doing yeah, this okay, joke over yeah. and over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna work no, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> as Dan was saying, sorry, before I interrupt. No, it's okay. It's just that apparently this is the sort of thing that you do is I, I give you like a great compliment and then you just come and you just ruin it. So yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I'm I'm getting used to this dynamic. It's weird that this never existed before the podcast. No, it has. What do you it mean? Has. It has, what absolutely. do you mean? <laughs> it absolutely has. Uh, okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, if you say so. All right. I mean, we don't have any recorded evidence proof of that, so. True. Well, uh, now we do, I, buddy. If, if we ask Craig, I'm sure he it exists. Nah, yeah, I don't know. Craig's let a that, liar. Let, let that son of a bitch die. <laughs> hey, Craig was great. Craig was great. Craig was fantastic. Craig was great. Uh, not as good as Riverside, riverside.fm for all of your studio podcasting needs. Mm-hmm. Riverside, please sponsor us. Uh, speaking of Riverside, we wanted to talk about some of our favorite NPCs. And apparently Noah and uh, Tyler both had some drench NPCs that they were big fans of. <laughs> and I don't know who these could be. So It's the same man. It is uh, the same man. I'm curious. It was oh, during boy. the... The like latter end of your off the lawn world. Mm-hmm. Uh, the server's name was Drench Thunderman's Fantasy World, which was the best. Uh, <laughs> but we encountered him as we were leaving the town that we started in. I think it was we were we were from Saint Honoris, heading towards Honoris. Yeah, Honoris. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, heading towards. I forget. We were looking for the home, uh, the original home of a wizard who had died, or not a wizard, but some spellcaster who had hidden something in his hometown. Mm-hmm. And we came upon a tavern on the wayside in the swamp. And yep. outside, there was a cryptic man <laughs> on the side. There it is. Who was just saying these weird phrases that none of us <laughs> with esoteric <laughs> meanings behind them i had literally started taking a bunch of notes quote like writing the exact <laughs> thing he started saying and it took me it took me like three for me to like lock it in what he was saying uh god let me see if i can find those notes real quick tyler god. keep going if you remember any i don't i like he I, okay I'll, i don't remember the exact ones but spoiler alert um, he talked exclusively in Smash Mouth lyrics. <laughs> uh, exclusively. Because exclusively. Drench accidentally named him uh, after the lead singer of Smash Mouth. And he went, why does that name sound familiar? Well, kind of. He was, he was an orc. And yeah. I put an orc name generator. I got an orc name generator. And the first one that came up was Smash Mouth. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Anyways, uh, that's the best character that's ever existed. And tr- no. Truly, truly. Uh, so I remember, that's the joke answer. But yeah, my real I remember, answer is. Andrew. No, I loved him. I that was one hundred percent my sincere answer. I love well, that dude. W- with that dude, I remember sifting through all. I spent like an hour sifting through Smash Mouth lyrics that weren't super recognizable, so that Obvious. you guys wouldn't get it immediately. I mean, I couldn't be like, I might as well be walking on the sun. You know, you've been like, oh, fuck me. That's and then I think Dan got it. He was like, yeah, I think hold on I a second. Right, it was Dan and I both said, wait, hold on. And like looked at each other through discord. <laughs> what, did he say what I thought he just said? I'm pulling up here lab right now to see if I could find the quotes because I was legitimately transcribing these as they were coming. And I was like, 
what do they mean? What do, the, what do they mean? <laughs> They're very cryptic in, to begin with. My real answer, though, it is uh, Agent Frank from our last Delta Green game, though. Mm. Agent, Agent Frank was a good one. That was my... Uh, he he was from the original PX Poker Night. And then he... Yeah. Uh, I also bumblefucked my way into figuring out his real identity by accidentally mm-hmm. connecting the dots where there weren't any. Yeah, it was... Uh, Buck Wild. That was that was still a moment where I'm like, how on earth did he do that? Like that, that doesn't make sense, right? Like, <laughs> I didn't yeah. give him enough clues. It's like uh, it was like the the thing where it's like, how do you draw an owl? You know, draw a circle and then draw the rest of the owl. Finish the fucking draw owl. The rest <laughs> of the fucking owl. I, he just he just did it. And so I was like, okay, well, I got to give it to him. So sure, why not? Uh, this is yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, nature of this game is a little bit different, so I'm not not, not revealing, you know, mm-hmm. what you uh, mm-hmm. what you have discovered. I was thinking, though, actually, again, this is another Mark NPC oh from uh, from Othvalon, and it was um, the the first blade of of uh, Saint Henris. Uh, what, what was her name? Opal. Opal. Opal uh, Grimwell. Oh that yeah, was a good Grimwell. Character. That was a good I, character. you know, my character in that game. Um, definitely needed like mentorship and i think uh opal was perfect for that and so it was a nice little like instant connection mentorship mm-hmm. fun that was such a fun game um yeah someday and every day every someday day i want to go back play to that it. again someday that's a patreon stretch goal we don't have a patreon yet but uh we're if we get a patreon <laughs> and i don't know We've Some already got stretch goals. Yeah, we we already have stretch goals. One Fifteen cents, American dollar. And somebody just donates. We'll run an Othalon campaign. <laughs> yeah, Woo, baby. <laughs> I'll donate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll throw in too. Shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, it was Pathfinder One. It was Othalon. It was wild. It was wild. Yeah, it was fun. I had that was a fun world. I liked playing that world. Um, my favorite character. Oh man, it was in the very first game that we played. Well, sort of the very first game that we ever played together. And I can't remember his name, but I made little gifts of him. And he was really Oh my god. You know who I'm talking about? It was Krant. in your game. Krant. Oh my god. <laughs> well, Krant has shown his face uh more than once. Yeah. Yeah. I pulled him I pulled him back into Iron Gods too, yeah. Yep. After after McNugget's character decapitated him <laughs> with a rapier, <laughs> took a while. Yeah, Krant was good, and then the one that uh, that is ubiquitous for Noah's games is Bart. Yep, yep. There was always a Bart. <laughs> I'm always There's looking. Always a Bart. We're always looking for a Bart. <laughs> so he's in he's in this game too. Yeah, I know. For me, at least, <laughs> he is not in this game. He I'm is coming out and saying that right <laughs> he now. He is. He is. He is. Yeah. There's a there's a man in New Hampshire named Bart. That doesn't realize it yet, but <laughs> right there. Uh, hey, I got one more thing about this universe that's different than ours. No Barts. No Bart. Bart doesn't Bart. Zero Bart. Bart. Bart Simpson to... dead. Yeah. Never existed. <laughs> doesn't exist. His name does is not exist. Right. His, his name is Scott in this. Uh, in this. Scott. Thing. Scott Simpson. I can't wait for the end of the campaign and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and Dan's like, and you meet this NPC, but and then just stares at the name <laughs> in the file. It's like, <laughs> how? Noah has been this you entire time. directly in your notes. Dan. <laughs> yeah, he's been hacking Dan just to make sure Bart's in the world. Yeah, Noah hacks him to add Bart. I hack him to accidentally find the outcome of the story. Editor's note: At this point in the conversation, I had to go take a work call, so I had to take a little pause. And we had a little conversation coming back in that is not going to make sense, but it ends with consequences of your own actions. And so that explains this lead in. All right. Well, speaking of consequences of your own actions, last episode was a bit of a doozy. Just got done editing it. uh, And I uh, don't remember at all anything that happened except that uh, you... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you surrounded Clementine with salt, and she collapsed into a pile of nothing, uh, yep. leaving just her clothes behind. Not a pile of dust, just a pile of nothing. Um, I definitely didn't say dust, and uh, I'm not saying dust on the recording, <laughs> obviously. So 
Uh, that was not a mistake I made. Uh, yeah, the, the sound <laughs> clearly 80 yard. And uh, yeah, Clementine f- falls into a pile of nothing. <laughs> you guys, I think that edit was pretty good. Uh, I've had some fun edits. Uh, mostly it's just, you know, removing some silence and over talk. But um, every once in a while, it's like, I have to rearrange all of these phrases so that they make sense. Uh, <laughs> God, why do I speak like this? Yeah, why do I speak like this? Anyways, uh, you also got down to the basement, began hacking through the wall. You guys did find out that, yes, indeed, there is a room back there. Detective Mar believed you, finally. And, yeah, I mean, it, clearly Clementine had been taken over by something. Uh, we'll not say what or which entity or uh, may or may not have taken over her body or that, why that worked. Um and you then had a little kind bit of, of a mental breakdown, I think, too. Yeah, uh, I so you had you had a few sanity rolls to make last episode, uh, and actually, that's so. The last thing that you saw was uh, in the room. You were able to see kind of through the uh, the hole that Jaw had made, and the wall of the room that was to the north, um, where Cyril had heard some strange. Uh, you know, footsteps beyond and the wall was warm to the touch, uh, grew some sort of moss or, uh, uh, other like algae or, or something, some scum on the wall that grew and then opened like a portal and a extremely tall, uh, dog like dog faced humanoid, uh, with like extended limbs and loose pink flesh hanging off its bones stood up, crouched into the room and held out its hands in a conciliatory way and said, uh, I believe the voice was something like, I can be of assistance if you will follow me. And uh, so we're going to start actually with, uh, because this is one thing whenever you run into, you know, one of these Lovecraftian creatures, uh, you got to start with a sand roll. So everyone's going to make sanity rolls. What? No. No way. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see about uh, Detective Mar. Oh, we got a 53. What was his sanity? I should go look that up. Ooh, barely failed. 65 over 64. I got a, a 96 over 52. Oh, God. Oh, his sanity is a 60, so he just passed. Okay, so 65, 96, and uh, 68 zero under 72 for me. So that's, I'm glad uh, the person closest to it passed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, all of the passes uh, will take zero, and all of the failures will take 1d6, which makes me really excited. So, before you roll your sanity... Um, you know, every once in a while in like a campaign that you write, I don't know, maybe Mark, I know you've homebrewed some stuff, Noah and, and Tyler, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've done a ton of homebrew, but when you're sort of oh, like yeah. charting out, you know, what what you want to do, you got some bullet points. Yep. And like, I know that the hook of this adventure was you going to the mayor and him telling you to come to the house, but the real like start to the adventure is now. Is right uh, now. This yeah. is, this <laughs> is uh, you know, all the all the other stuff. This has been, we've, we've just gotten out of the prologue. Yeah, right. that's what I was thinking the other day when when we had finished. I was like, "This is where we really start." Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, I think I said the other day that like I had thought that you guys were going to meet this guy episode three or so. <laughs> yeah. Here we uh, are. Eight episodes later. And <laughs> well, so, one impromptu hospital visit <laughs> later. Yep, yeah. Yep. So this I, is this is real. Where I'm the game had like four HP. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So still I am. Hey, no complaints, no complaints. But I just wanted to say, like, this is where things start. So these, this sanity roll, uh, for those, so Joel and Marcy will be having to make a 1d6 sanity roll. This is going to, like, set some tenors for the whole campaign. And I'm really, really <laughs> interested to see. Because if you hit, I believe, five or more, uh, you have a temporary breakdown. Yep. And if you, I think Marcy is close to her breaking point. Which will give her a long-term um, insanity, you know, issue. Well, that's not good. Uh, yeah. So, 
Uh, let's go ahead and roll those sanity. This is this is important. All right. Oh boy! You wanted to roll. You want us to roll them ourselves? You want us to? I do. I <laughs> do. I do want you to be the arbiters of your fate in this case. All right. I got a two. Oh, I got a five. Oh no! All right, Marcy. Uh, so appropriate given all of her reticence in this in this manner so far. Um, Joel, go ahead and take that two. Does that bring you to a breaking point? Nope. I am six away now. Okay. So, Marcy, I believe that takes you to a breaking point. Yeah, and it, you I'm took at five forty-seven in a row. out of uh, my breaking point was forty-eight. Um, oh, okay, boy. so you go ahead and reset your breaking point, which is your current sanity, so forty-seven minus, I believe, your pow. Yeah. Um, so whatever your pow is, subtract that. That's your new breaking point. Uh, okay. So you, you get two fun things, and the fir- the second one is the sort of disorder which we don't have to decide right now. You can kind of figure that out as you go. But the first one that we're going to do is fight, flight, or freeze. What do you do in this moment? And, I mean, you could roll. You can just decide what you think is most likely or narratively interesting. That's all up to you, Noah. What does Marcy do? I think she just freezes. Like, she's just in a state of sheer shock after seeing a a person... She knows pretty well just instantly evaporate in front of her into a pile of nothing. And then <laughs> this thing claw its way out of the hole after the house attempted to gaslight her into believing that nothing actually happened. Uh, she fully just went insane and fell through her hole. That's it. There's nothing else odd going on. Weird, crazy. <laughs> um, with this entire hole missing... And then it's just this. Like, I think her brain is just temporarily shutting down. Is kind of what just happens. Okay. I would like to put out that Cyril and Detective Mar hears a girl scream behind them. Yeah. And they look mm-hmm. behind them. And if Marcy's mouth is shut. That, that, that sounds coming out of Joel's mouth. <laughs> can I just, uh, can, can I ask you a question, Dan? No. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Are we allowed to push sanity onto our bonds? Yes, yes. That's a great. Uh, that's I a keep great forgetting point. that's a mechanic. So I keep forgetting I, too. I keep forgetting about this. So, yeah, um, I'm looking at my two huge scores over here, and I'm like, I can use those 36 points right there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do you know how to do that? Should we Should we go over that yeah, a little could, bit? Could you yeah. please? Because I yeah. actually would like to. Okay, let me... Um, yeah, I would like to not hit a that. breaking point right now. So I think it's you take your sanity loss, and then you roll... I think you roll a d6, don't you? And then you subtract whatever that number is from the amount of sanity loss you had. Yeah, let me uh, let me get the actual... Just real quick. But if it's like one, you can just push that. Yeah, so yeah. resisting insanity. And by the way, because I should call this out when it's a sand roll, that it's... It's either violence, helplessness, or the unnatural. In this case, it's it's the unnatural. So when you project onto a bond, you spend willpower to reduce the loss. The amount mm-hmm. you is, is 1d4. You roll the die and reduce your willpower by that much. And as long as you don't use all your willpower, you can reduce the sand by that same roll. Yeah. And you choose, um, you you reduce a bond score by that same amount. So, Noah, would you like to do that for Mercy? Uh, yes, absolutely. I would. Uh, I would like to not know, be at a breaking I, point right now. I feel bad because it would have been narratively interesting to have Noah have a disorder. But yeah, but here's you know what? Thing. No, I'm fine with that. Narratively with interesting that. is one thing, but we we do play a game this, for a reason, right? <laughs> right? If we just wanted to do narratively interesting, I would throw all the rules out the window, right? right. You're it, writing a book. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just write a book. I do have four bonds right now. Yeah, so I mean, what's your willpower? I mean, that's a... Yeah. Uh, my power right now is... No, 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 well. your, your, your oh, willpower. willpower. Oh, 11. Yeah, so, I mean, you've got, you've got plenty to do. Do you want to try this? Because even if you do one, one will at least take you out of that fight, flight, or freeze. Right. And it yeah. will take you only to your breaking point, which is still hitting a breaking point. Okay, yeah. Comes the big four. I mean, that'd be great. So just roll 1d6? No, 1d4. 
1d4, my bad. Three. 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 So that's great. So that means, it, so reduce your willpower by three, your, w, your WP, not your pal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then choose a bond. Which bond do you want to project this onto? Uh, the mayor. Ooh. This is his fault that I'm here. Oh, that's, hey, you know what? Going back to narratively interesting, yeah, that's pretty sure. good too. That's good. Uh, that is go good ahead, one. Tyler. No, I was just saying that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you only take um, you only take two, All and right. you reduce that bond with the mayor by three. And now, uh, okay, everything everything's resolved. Unless I'm going to do I, it as well. Do you want to? Okay. So yeah, roll I would like to four. do that as well. Uh, I got the four. I got the big four. Cool. Yeah, well, you only took two, so that just means you can project two. So, yep. Yep. Uh, and my two are going to go on to Kian because I like to think the last thing he thought about was, <laughs> God, I don't want to fucking go out and get goddamn oatmeal. <laughs> Kian's grocery list has been like the bane of your existence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, yeah, Detective Barr, having not taken any, I think he he looks at everybody and he's like, he's like, you guys are the experts. Should we follow this thing? I think Marcy just is still like, not necessarily in that fright, flight or freeze, but she is still frozen, like just staring at this thing, like a deer in headlights. And all that, it, just her face is just drenched in sweat coming down from just pure terror at this thing. Just uh, staring at it, like, mouth shut, just, like, wide-eyed. Did it disappear back into the portal, or is it... No, no, it's it's standing there, sort of arms uh, akimbo, you know, in a very sort of trying to be non-threatening, but in the way that a giant, you know, this thing's got to be eight, eight, nine foot tall. Hmm. Um, would this be an occult roll to learn what it is? Uh, no, this would be an unnatural roll, I believe. Okay. Uh, never mind. Um, Joel, uh, in this case, because he 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 screams a little, but he doesn't. It's not high pitched this time. Um, he'll kind of push forward, kind of between Marcy and uh, Cyril, getting closer to the creature. What the fuck are you? What the fuck is happening here? Where's my sister? What do you know about my sister? says um i i do not know your sister but please come with me before the others return i do not want too many people to know of my existence and he's like straining both to like keep himself in this room and then like straining to speak like he's you know squeaking and um sort of chirping in between in between his speech um and then uh he says uh please follow me and he puts his hand on the the wall that you have made this small hole in and uh, much like the wall that he entered it sort of grows some like grayish green moss and then opens as a portal and he beckons you enter um just real quick before we follow you uh What's your name? Are you, do you, are you called something? I am called Glomus of the Riviera Clan. Uh, a client? You have a clan? Y- yes. I can explain more when we are away from here. What can I just... Well, you have to understand our predicament right now is that we we usually don't follow strange things into a portal is there a reason we can't have this convo on this side of the veil the this house is a special place and i cannot remain here for long okay we can come back after we talk yes yes of of course hmm. i i only wish to meet with you and and learn from you and you can learn from me in turn oh, well um i don't see that we have much of a choice here we need answers and i need to find clementine 
What the fuck are you? Please, I will explain more. Come now. My power to keep this open is waning. And you can see he, he's like straining and, and sweaty. Cyril will begin to follow. In fact, he'll try to get a piggyback ride. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it, it'll be fun. Yeah, but Cyril uh, will follow him or like make gestures like, you know, we need to figure this out. And I think that uh, Glomus here is the only way we're going to do that. Lead the way, please. He uh, turns and enters into uh, the hole that he has made. And as all of you pass through, the one, uh, the one portal closes behind you uh, as if nothing had happened, including that the uh, the work that you had made uh, to to make a, like a I think it's a head sized hole in that wall and then y'all exit again north out to the manor into this tunnel uh, which if you look on roll twenty uh, you should be there yeah this totally doesn't look uh, threatening also I love how it's now a one by two size token it's- uh, just to <laughs> emphasize it's it's height. Yes, terrifying. Very tall. And to show off more of that Whoa. sweet, sweet artwork. Yes. Uh, I got to say, Delta Green, Art Dream Publishing, their artwork is amazing. amazing. Uh, Phenomenally terrifying. I, I love just, how much it looks like like a found footage. Like mm-hmm. this was a picture found on like a Polaroid from the 70s we found in this yeah. dilapidated building. Yeah, okay. we followed that in there. We're fucked. We're good. Yep, we're going to die here. Well, it'll be a short campaign. I think we'll be all right. I, I'll trust Glomus with all my heart. All right. So. I thought you said with Omaha for a second there. I trust him with Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. Yeah, Marcy will follow in shock. Absolutely. I assume the detective comes in with us. Yeah, the, the detective follows y'all and is like, if, you, if you're doing it, I'm doing it. That's fine. Um... Can I look? Does the detective still have? Does, was he carrying a sidearm or a firearm? Uh, he was. Yes. Does he still have it? Uh, he does actually. Mm. Okay. It's almost as if there was some incident that happened that caused all of y'all's. Uh, right. Okay. Can you see through this fog of war now? Did that polygon reveal work? I genuinely can't tell. Uh, so I did reveal like a little bit of the size of this thing just because that's what I do. But I wanted to kind of have him uh, walk through this because uh, this underground is, is kind of a strange place. Um, and y'all can, y'all can follow him as he uh, leads through. And once, he, once he's into this chamber and outside of the manor, he actually turns to y'all and says, Do you mind if I uh, take a different guy's? Uh, it is easier for me now that I am not in that place. Uh, do whatever makes you feel good, Glomus. And uh, you see him begin to shrink down. And um, he uh, assumes the visage of one Antoine Babineau. What? Oh, man. Uh, That's about right. And- he looks uh, and he says, I hope this is not offensive to you. <clears throat> and he like clears his throat and he says, um, it's just that uh, it's a little bit easier, I've noticed, to move among the humans in a human guise. Um, I, I have a quick question. Yeah. <laughs> what does this path look like that we're in? Uh, so it looks like uh, definitely man-made tunnels these are rounded out tunnels they're about eight and a half foot uh well eight to nine foot uh wide at points um they've got some uh uh supports like wooden supports uh it feels almost like a mine in some ways in the way that it's uh cut and carved out um but uh and and the other thing is is that there's like this bioluminescence that is providing like an exceptionally bright light that you would not be familiar with. If anyone wants to make some rolls, I don't know if you've got like engineering or, um, 
I don't know, like some science rolls. Closest thing I have is craft mechanic, but I kind of picture that being more like car related. Yeah, that's that's fair. I mean, you could always just like roll it and and see, you know, like on a success, you might get like a little something. On a crit, you might be like, oh, I get it. Yeah, you know what? If you're going to offer it, I'll take it. I'm yeah, can I roll heavy machinery? We all have 10% in that. Yeah, everyone can roll base <laughs> heavy machinery. That's that's fine. At, at best, I have computer science. Uh, oh, man. Baby, that sweet, sweet 965. I mean, 965 with that craft engineering, I think what Joel sees in this is that um, it's actually like the wood probably isn't strong enough on its own. Um, given the the nature of the underground stuff, like you guys dug in this and uh, in like Louisiana soil, this would get so waterlogged and like yeah, it's it you you notice that like there's no obvious drainage and so like how is this not flooded? There there's I would say with the nine, what the biggest thing that sticks out to you is that there must be something else going on here. Um, but it still looks. Of human origin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joel looks around, taking this in as he follows uh, the now Antoine disguised creature. And he says, We're not in like some weird upside down place, right? Like, we're not like in another world or anything. Like, this is, this is just the basement, right? Right? Mm, no, we're. No longer in the manor. This is tunnels that uh, are under this ground. Um, they have been here for as long as I as I know. 50, 70 years. And, uh, You're that old. I am much older, but the Riviera clan has moved. And we moved here. And he looks and he's like, I do not remember, but we moved here and found these tunnels empty and they are useful to us. Um, can I just have a point of clarification here, Glomus? Oh, sorry. I forgot that he also is using his Antoine voice. Uh, we moved to you and they were open to us. Um, yes, yes, yes. What you are you? not actually the mayor, correct? You're just using this because it makes us feel comfortable. It makes you more comfortable. We didn't actually have a meeting with you, did we? He's the mayor's brother right now, not... Uh, oh, he's the mayor's brother? I thought he said he was the mayor. No, I said uh, Antoine Babineau. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. Pause um, for a minute. Did you want to ask him? Ask him what? Oh, if he was like... If he was really Antoine Babineau, I assume... Oh, or did yeah, you no. Know? Yeah, that, I, I just was curious. I thought he was... I originally thought he was the mayor. No, no, and I'm no, like, okay. this is not... That's not kosher. So, um, yeah. Um, I guess I could, um, are you, uh, hey, Glomus, um, are you Antoine, are you really Antoine Babineau, like, uh, or is he actually dead? It says, uh, no, no, he, no, no, he's, uh, gosh, I gotta, I, I gotta keep remembering. I, I was like, man, I hate this ghoul voice and now I'm using it. Um, <laughs> he says, uh, n- no, 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 I, um, uh, I, I am using his visage only he uh he is an independent person or, or was uh you so he may... is for, he's for sure dead yes i okay. i know it is uh, i know it's hard for y'all to trust me but um i did not myself take his life and as he's like like walking through he's just you know observing um some of these some of the walls and stuff and like uh every once in a while like up against the wall there be like there'll be like a whole bookshelf and the bookshelf will be filled with just a bunch of trinkets and tchotchkes um just various things um i mean some of it like some books some paintings some pens some pens p-e-n-p-i-n pens um like uh, uh, balloon birthday balloons, um, just a, a variety of things uh, down here. Like you know, every once in a while, just a pile of them. Are you the one who put those things of ours down 
there where we just were. He uh, he turns and looks, and he says, um, "Yes, yes, it's uh, part of my investigation among the the humans in this town. I, I have to get to know you, uh, Marcy. I, I only know some bits and pieces of you, but I, I I need little bits and pieces just to be able to understand the humans and and keep my." My link to humanity strong. Not all of my people are as strong as I am in that regard. Why do you need to maintain a link to us, to humanity as a whole, or just uh, the... I don't know how to phrase this question. Just what... He says, um, you, you have to understand, and I, I know you may not believe me, just as you may not believe that I found Antoine dead out in a field, but I, I was once a human. I have fleeting memories, but the more that I hang on to human relations even if only one way the stronger my connection to humanity remains and the less lost I am it is part of why I do not mind taking upon the guise of a human person and y'all come to this area which um, the sort of packed rock and stone floor um becomes a little more flooded and you can see that this sort of opens up and it looks a lot more like a natural cavern um i don't know if any of you have like geology but um this one looks like and you you're kind of like i don't know have we been have we been going deeper have we been staying the same it's a little hard to say given the size of all this but he uh, walks through this water that at parts reaches to knee high and some of the uh, some of the rocks are a little bit slippery, but uh, not so much that anyone needs to make like dexterity checks or anything like that. So, where are everyone else in your clan if this is your guys's home? Uh, he turns to you and says, um, "Joel, I am well among my people. I am called an cloudy." Anna Cloudy, uh, in your tongue, I believe this is what is known as a wizard. Hmm. And so I live separate and apart. And uh, as you turn this corner past this little flooded area, it opens up into this room, uh, which he's got like a bed and um, a little gas stove with uh, uh, venting towards the towards the top, uh, and then along this wall over here, all the sort of western wall, uh, it is lined with a bench, and then just gobs and gobs of um, test tubes and Erlenmeyer flasks, and some are like some are being heated, some are you know on induction plates, some are being stirred by little automatic stir rods he's got like human technology and then he's but you look at all this stuff and i mean there's like green potions blue potions you know bubbling things just incredible like a wall just filled with these bizarre um concoctions and formulations and he uh he goes over and and grabs a, a blue one um and he said uh this this is one I, I attempted when I found Antoine. Uh, knowing a little of who he was, I attempted to use this for him to restore him to life, but something had stolen his essence. Um, and so uh, his body and his heart were not receptive to it. I understand that you may have some questions for me so please please ask and I may answer but please understand that 
whatever is going on in that house is something beyond what even I know through my many studies. What I can tell you um, is that that manor is protected by powerful magics from people, but also from where it is on Earth. There's something special about its location. It, it, it's it's a some sort of center of great strength. So so please please any questions you may have about me or about the manner that I, I may know I can I can help. And uh, Detective Mar is like looking at the wall and he's like, this map is like extremely detailed and it's just a it's like an actual blueprint map of um care for with like plots and house numbers i don't know if you've ever seen one of these maps where it has like every street and then every house with its number um oh like the just, zoning maps yeah and uh, it's yeah. just extreme and it's got like utility lines on it um and, and all sorts of stuff and uh, he says, Detective Ma, I, I, I uh, understand that you are not part of this group per se, but um, perhaps your involvement here is no mere coincidence, as few things are. All right, so I have one question. Yes. You said you're a wizard. That is like, the closest approximation, yes. Okay, like spells and towers wizard not like so, weird hoods and racism was wizard no i'm not a member of the ku klux klan okay i will i didn't figure you were a direct member but i was just making it anyways um i'm so sorry this is like I, your tower? I don't have many connections to humanity was this some sort of joke that i missed <laughs> no this was more i'm making sure that you're not going to turn us in for not being more like I don't know man this is all fucking weird okay I think he violates the Ku Klux Klan's bylaws he is <laughs> I, I wouldn't he know probably I've is. never tried to join <laughs> uh, but okay so people don't come here because this is like your tower like your wizard tower the others of my clan may be a little resentful of my connections to humanity. You, and he like looks down, um, downcast, and he's like, you must understand that we, we are known in some traditions as ghouls. That is not the name we give ourselves, but it is a name given to us. And perhaps it is because of the ghoulish means by which we must sustain our life. And he just... I mean, you don't, like, eat people or anything, right? He, his eyes are downcast. He says, no, 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 we, we do not consume living flesh. Did you eat Antoine? Yeah, key word there being living flesh, right? Yes. I, as part of the ritual, consumed his heart. Mm -hmm. But that is necessary in order to restore him to life. Unfortunately, some other things were in operation that did not allow me to restore his life. But yes, in a normal circumstance, I would consume a dead body. How did whatever you are now come to be? He looks at you, Mercy, um, and he says, Marcy, I'm not sure that you have the stomach for every bit of no uh, no i i don't that's true since i i appreciate the curiosity but please understand that it's been long enough that i don't know exactly how it 
happened. I, I have seen the transformation in others. But you must understand that that not that is not the only way one of our kind becomes uh, what we are. Why are you doing all this? Doing all of what? She gestures towards the scientific equipment, the map of care for, and she just kind of like waves her arms around like all of this studying us aside from trying to maintain your link to what you said was your humanity what is the what is the reason for your investigation what started it when my clan came to care for we knew that this town was a special place and we in our minds provide a service of sorts to keep places safe from other things that may not well, may have aims at causing more harm to living humans we are only a threat to dead humans. We don't, we don't like to fight humans. We, we have been known to. I cannot lie to you. There, there have been ghouls who have attacked humans, but that was out of necessary self-preservation, and in times, just mindless violence. But when we attempt to to keep ourselves from the humans. It's a it's a fair, um, fair arrangement. The humans don't need to know that we exist, and so that's part of what I do by keeping my humanity as guarded as I do. I keep an eye on the ghouls, make sure that they are not going beyond the bounds of this unspoken and, in your case, unknown agreement. And by getting to know people, I can be aware of who might be most receptive to our communications. Uh, I can also rein things in on our activities if need be. And the better I know people and know this town, um, the, the more in touch I am. And then all of this, and he gestures at the wall, um, helps me deal with my own people whether it be keeping them linked to humanity as best we can uh, you understand that it is a bit of a stressful thing to try and remain human while also consuming dead human flesh it is not easy it is incredibly stressful actually um, that is one reason that I have distance myself from them and why I um, have attempted other means to feed myself. Is that sufficient answer for you? Yeah. So you're like a men in black between humans and you. ghouls? What are you, what are you protecting us against? <laughs> he looks at you uh, and he says there are creatures entities and quite frankly humans with a knowledge of things like me and my people who would seek to do me harm do you harm if they had the chance in fact the reason that I am here one of the things that I provide for care for is a magical ward around the entire city you probably have never noticed it but detective ma do you know the relative murder rate of care for compared to other towns in louisiana of its size and 
Detective Barr uh, takes his like eyes off the map and he's like, well, I mean, not off the top of my head. I mean, it's I, I know we're fairly low. And uh, he says, actually, we are we are in the bottom quartile of the state for cities of our size. Detective Barr's like, well, that's uh, I think that's pretty good, I'd say. And then you just said our size. Do you consider yourself to be a resident of Care 4? This is a, now that is a tricky question. I do not pay taxes. I maintain no <laughs> legal residence. But I I know the people of Care 4. And while I understand that many of them would reject me uh, out of sight, I don't do this service for love or affection or acceptance. I do it because of responsibility and duty. Have we come across you before? Like, obviously we wouldn't. It's the first time I've seen you proper, but like, have you talked to us without us knowing? Uh, and how many, how many of them, how many are you? I mean, what is your number? And have you infiltrated our society? He says, like, uh, is care for like half Google? <laughs> he says, the the Riviera clan is, is small. There are some 15 of us adults with three changelings, last I knew. Now, a changeling is, is a human who will someday undergo this transformation. Uh, they are in care for and integrated among you uh but when the day comes that they are they can no longer retain their human visage uh they will join us full time now in my time here in care for part of the riviera clan we came here as 10 and we've lost two and so seven more have joined. Uh, either a couple came from a different clan who decided to join us, and the rest were changelings. They are people who, Detective Ma, you may remember missing people from your childhood. Um, in some cases, they have gone on to join our group, but it is not many. Now, I do not get out to care for very often um so no you you probably have not seen me and when our people do go among humans in a human visage it is usually to collect a dead body for consumption so we try and avoid any notice and right now i'm actually going to actually after all of this information I'm going to go ahead and need uh, just some sanity rolls. These are all going to be I was waiting for zero it. ones. Success. Six under 72. Okay. Success. Success. Okay. So jo- uh, failure. 86 over 64. Joel is the only, or yeah, Joel is the only one who takes uh, one point in the sanity damage. Um, I don't know if that's just like extra disturbing to you. Um, or if you, maybe, maybe Joel's like still convinced that, this, this guy has come and visited him at work or something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, he's probably experienced customers that yeah. could potentially be considered ghoulish. Didn't I change um, your brakes last week? <laughs> yeah. You're, 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 you're the son of a bitch that didn't know what a timing belt was. Pay, you didn't pay me for my timing belt change, you son of a... Uh, no, I think that it's... It's too fantastical for him. I think that's what it is. That fucks with him. Yeah, um... Detective Mar is like, I listen. I don't know anything about a magical barrier, but also, um, I at this point I have no reason to doubt anything about it. Um, I'm just going to assume you're telling the truth, but also, I part of me thinks that I fell asleep. Maybe I got carbon monoxide poisoning, and this is all some sort of weird fantasy before I die. Uh, I'm having. I I mean I don't feel crazy. Uh, I don't. I, everything feels normal. It doesn't feel like a dream. It doesn't feel like that. So 
Detective, I don't think the crazy people feel crazy either. Then, I'm hoping for the carbon monoxide poisoning too, sir. sir. Cyril, can, can Cyril slap the, uh, the detective? Yeah, good. Um, do you want me to roll or do you want me to just... I, it's a slap. You can slap him. Okay, so I'm going to slap him. Okay, he pulls <laughs> out his see. gun and shoots you. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a dream anyway. Oh my god. Uh, uh, yeah, he just walks up to him and slaps him. And he's just like, are you awake now? Like this, do you understand? And yeah. he's like, he's like, God, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> he puts his, his hand up to his, his face and he's like, yeah, that felt real. Uh, you know, you're in it now. Yeah. Uh, and so the, the ghoul um, turns to y'all uh, as Antoine um, Glomus. And he says, uh, now, please, can you tell me what is going on in the house? Because even with my powers, um, it is guarded against things like me. And so it is impenetrable to me. And I would like you to tell me everything that you can about what's going on there. That and perhaps I can assist you in some way. How? Uh, sorry, I'm still reeling. How long ago did you say that you started your investigation in Care 4? I have been here... Mm. And he like thinks back and he's like I have been here 50 55 years why should I say anniversary <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there's been weird shit about the Flores and Manor since like the people lived there 20s when did you I can't believe I'm coordinating that when did you start noticing weird shit about the manor oh well the manor's always been a special place ever since i came here this is part of the reason that i absconded to these tunnels um, they i have done my best to keep them up um and but they they seemed out of use when i when i came here uh, but yes, it's always been a, a place of great power. Again, I think because of where it's located. But there's there's more than just its location. Yeah, what is it? Are we talking like um, like a ley line? Does it lie on like a ley line or something like that? Can you be more specific about why it's so powerful? He says, "Yes, you you know of ley lines. I understand that they were kept in preservation in some of humanity's." You know, stories and histories. There are a couple of strong ley lines that cross right at the manor. Um, mm -hmm. But ley line crossing is not sufficient to explain. There, there may be more. I have conducted some astrological studies, astronomical studies, uh, a variety of um, checks on everything that I know. But... Uh, it is hard to understand exactly what confluence of events or properties causes it. So it's just some weird locus of strange energy and happenings. Uh, happenings, I would, I would uh, say no, but energy, yes, for sure. Um, I suspect if I was allowed, if I could get into the building itself I might be able to uh, perform some of my rituals and I suspect that the manor itself would have a uh, empowering effect on any ritual that I performed due to some magical resonance that is my that's my suspicion but it, again the the wards and protections on the manor itself are Strong and well held. By whom? Um, By whom? Who's holding them? I I, I could not tell you. Is, is that what you're wondering about? Who's 
what powerful entities in there right now? That's, that's what I suspect. Is ah, there's there's almost definitely some sort of there's some sort of seal on the house itself, and whatever that seal is prevents me from entering beyond just this accessory room. I've I've tried the front door, back door, uh, attic, uh, all sorts of things, but it's just this. I suspect this uh, pre-existing weakness in the foundation. Um, allows me again just a temporary entrance into it and uh, I could not enter it in my human guise because uh, any sort of extra magical protection that I bring into me uh, in, in, in with me is um, eliminated when I cross that threshold do you, do you I'm going to hate myself for asking this do you need us to run interference for you to perform some ritual or something uh, and you see a smile on Antoine's face. And he uh, says, uh, Now, Marcy, that is a very good question. I do have something that I would like you to do for me. It may require a bit of work on your part. And that is where we're going to cut it for tonight. As he gives a, a smile that slightly extends beyond what a human mouth should do. <laughs> she has the biggest Darcy. frown on her face right now. <laughs> she did vacate herself for asking that. <laughs> Thanks once again for tuning in to Chaos Springs Eternal presents Season 1 City of Woe, a Quartermasters of the Tabletop production. Is it enough hierarchy for you? Uh, well, if it's not, then uh, uh, we'll, we'll try and add another layer. If it is, then good. Um, we have been recording some other shows, and I, we don't have release dates yet, but I'm excited for them. They've been really, really fun to play. Of course, this one, for me, is the most fun to play. But that's because I get to do things like introduce my players to a um, friendly ghoul. It's not something that you see in most uh, Delta Green actual plays, I bet. But we, we might be the only one. But uh, even if we're not, the point is we're, we're glad to have you listening every week make sure that you go check the show notes uh for all of our social media links please leave us a you know review and, and comment on itunes um if you see us on reddit say hello uh if you see us in the, the pretending to be people discord say hello uh just really have appreciated all the feedback that we've gotten uh make sure that you share it with your other friends who might enjoy uh one of these actual plays so uh we will see you next week So it's okay if I just fart really loudly directly into my microphone. Always. always okay. <laughs> it's just I have to deal with the consequences. Nobody, yeah. else, has, nobody else has to deal with that. You, it's yeah, just a funny noise. Uh, you have to speak into your fart cloud for... It's <laughs> like a fucking green gaseous cloud around it. <laughs> <laughs> just a green oh. mist hanging around right where your face right. is on. Why did I do this? What? <laughs> oh no, the consequences of my actions. <laughs> well, said, well, well. If it isn't the consequences of mine own actions... Among my people, I am called a Hlaf. Nope, that's bad. Um, <laughs> I am unpronounceable. I am. <laughs> I have a lot of consonants ball. and apostrophes. <laughs> <laughs>